everybody and um, happy friday last day of online learning from me last of our florence nightingale activities and today if you'd like to join in you would need a pencil to do a little bit of writing and some drawing some lined paper if you like lines to help you like i do and a bit of plain paper for a drawing activity that i've got for you Okay, so we have a drawing activity that will come first, then we've got a little writing activity and then if you wanted to, at the end, there's a little role play activity as well. If you made a Florence Nightingale lamp the other day, like this one, then you may want to use that for your role play. So if I turn the screen round, let's have a little look at what we're going to do today. So here we go. This is your last day of Florence Nightingale activities from Miss Dawson. And the first one is an art activity. So I'm asking you here to have a go at a poster about Florence Nightingale. Next to the thinking cloud, it says, can you design a poster about Florence Nightingale? Maybe it could be about her and her life as a nurse. So perhaps you want to think about some of the things that you've seen on screen this week. Maybe you've done a little bit of research yourself on the internet. Maybe you want to do a more modern take on that poster. And it says maybe it could be about her legacy of training for nurses and why we have the Nightingale hospitals today. So you would know from what we've looked at this week that Florence was responsible for setting up that first training school for nurses. And nurses are really, really important for everybody today. So we're really lucky that we have lots and lots of men and women who go and qualify and work as nurses for us in our National Health Service. You might have seen that we've got some Nightingale hospitals that have been set up really quite recently in the last few weeks. We've got one in London and one in Manchester and one in Birmingham and Cardiff. They're in some other cities as well. Maybe you want to see if you can find out where they are. There's something a little bit strange about them because they weren't built to be hospitals. They have been set up really quickly in buildings that weren't usually hospitals and they were set up just in case we needed them, just in case lots of people got poorly with coronavirus and there were too many people who were poorly and needed looking after and helped by nurses to fit into the ordinary hospitals. Now, I think that everyone seems to have been doing quite a good job with washing our hands and staying at home and keeping safe because if you've seen anything on the news about the Nightingale hospitals, they've not been very full at all, which is a good thing. So maybe you want to do a more modern poster about what it's like now for nurses. Maybe you want to draw a modern nurse and say thank you. So I've given you some ideas in thinking clouds around here to think about. What layout is your poster going to have? What size paper are you going to use? Are you having any pictures or any graphics on it? And if you're doing colouring, I would like you to make sure that you're thinking about being careful when you're doing that colouring in. Are you? including facts on it or is it just going to be pictures if you are including facts which ones are they going to be i'm hoping that we're going to get some really neat writing and this one at the bottom is really quite important what's the audience that this is for so who are you aiming your poster at is it one for everybody to see no matter how old they are is it for adults to look at is it for the children in your class to look at is it for children younger than you? Are you making a poster that maybe the teachers could use to help them teach a topic about Florence Nightingale? So before you start on your blank sheet of paper, have a little think about these things and then hopefully we're going to get some really, really good designs. If you finish a poster and you'd like to send it in, then I know that Mrs Gachette and Mr Danes would love to receive that photograph. And I'm sure that they would then be able to share things on our social media as well. If you're not fancying a poster, what about this next thing? So I wondered if you might like to do an interview with Florence Nightingale. I've asked you to think about here, 
imagine you are a reporter for the TV news. Now, you and I know that she was born 200 years ago and the TV didn't exist at that time. So I am asking you to stretch your imagination in quite an elastic way here. But if you could interview Florence Nightingale, can you think of some really interesting questions to ask her? So I've given you five question clouds here around Florence, and I'm hoping that you can come up with five really interesting questions. When you do an interview, it's much better to ask what's called an open question rather than what is called a closed question. So a closed question usually only has a yes or no answer. A closed question could be something like, Miss Dawson, do you like cups of tea? And everybody in school would know that there is only one answer to that question and it is yes. An open question would be, Miss Dawson, can you tell us about some of your favourite foods? Now that's going to be a more interesting answer than yes or no. There's more things that you can say and more things to talk about. So I don't know if you want to ask Florence Nightingale about what she would like to eat, but when you are coming up with these questions, try and make them interesting questions that are open questions so that Florence is going to be able to say an interesting answer rather than just a yes, no answer. And on our next page, I have asked you to write down your questions, ask for help if you need it. So maybe there's somebody at home that can help you with some spelling. Maybe somebody can write them out for you and then you do your best writing and copy those out underneath. When you've had a think about those questions, I'm asking you here, now try and imagine what her answers would be. Have a go at writing down what you think Florence's answers to your questions would be. And when you've got those really good questions and some interesting answers, can you persuade someone to do a role play interview with you? Now, I'm hoping that somebody at home won't mind joining in. If everybody's a bit busy or there isn't someone at home that wants to join in, maybe you've got a toy that you could have a go with. I would be getting Ted out if nobody here was willing to help me. And I would be asking Ted, you might remember, I drew Ted and coloured him in for you and sent that off for Meaningful May. But I'm quite lucky today because I have managed to persuade somebody in my house to have a go at being Florence. And I'm going to show you how somebody could help you out with your role play interview about Florence Nightingale. So. This is my last thing for today and it's my last thing in the week and um, I'm hoping that you've enjoyed our little look this week at Florence Nightingale and I'm quite certain that you're going to enjoy what comes next. You'll have to wait and see who your teacher for your topic is going to be next week and what they're going to do but it's been lovely doing some learning with you this week Runworth and I hope you all stay safe and take care. In the meantime I shall just turn this screen round and then have a little go at my practice role play interview with Florence Nightingale. So I hope you've got some really interesting questions to ask Florence. I don't have a Florence, but I have got a Josh. <laughs> so let's see if we can make Josh look a little bit more like Florence Nightingale. It's a good job that you have a black. Jump it on. Try that in a bit of a knot. Okay. So Florence is a nurse and on those pictures she had a blouse with a white collar. Let's see if we poke that in there. Give you a bit of a white collar maybe, Josh? No. Nice and frilly to be Florence. There we go. You need a hat. Let's find a little hat for you. Hang on. Ooh. She had a white frilly hat on as well, didn't she? Which is the best that I can do. 
right? I don't think she had a beard, but we can't really make you shave that off. Um, she was known as the Lady of the Lamp. So, here we have Florence ready to be interviewed. I have got my interesting questions. I hope that you are going to give us some really interesting answers. So, Josh and I will have a go at doing Florence and the TV interview. You leave us to it. We're going to get on with what we're doing. Hope you have the rest of your day enjoying yourselves. Take care, everybody. Stay safe. See you soon.